in a dystopian future where the villains have won and divided what's left of the world amongst themselves, Wolverine is dead, and in his place remains a broken man named Old Man Logan. What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment here, and welcome to another episode of Comic History, the weekly show where I explain and retell the iconic storylines, origins, and events in the world of comics. In this video, we're going to be talking about Old Man Logan, an eight-issue storyline written by Mark Millar in 2008 for the Wolverine ongoing solo series, which takes place in an alternate future where Marvel's heroes have been defeated and the remains of America have been carved into rough territories, ruled over by despotic supervillains. Wolverine is one of the few heroes who survived the massacre, but after being broken in spirit by an event that is revealed during the series, he has become a pacifist intent on never popping his claws again, and wants only to live out his quiet life with his wife and children as an impoverished farmer in the California territory of Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk. Old Man Logan is an awesome story, free from continuity and able to do whatever the hell it wants with the characters and settings. It creates some incredible situations and imagery that inspired an eventual return to prominence during recent years, with Old Man Logan himself being pulled out of his alternate reality and into mainstream Marvel continuity, where he currently serves as a replacement of sorts for our Wolverine, who has been considered dead since the 2014 Death of Wolverine story, and also inspiring the live-action movie Logan starring Hugh Jackman. We're going to cover the entire original Old Man Logan story storyline in this video, so let's jump right in. Our story begins with Old Man Logan living a quiet, depressing life with his wife and two children, finding himself unable to even sell the few pigs he has due to a past problem with them spreading disease, and his family concerned about not being able to make the rent, which they pay to the family of the Hulk monthly for him to allow them to live in his territory. When his wife talks about selling the children's Xbox, Logan refuses to give away his children's toys for his inability to pay the rent, and tells his daughter when she asks about his past that there's no such thing as superheroes. Logan is confronted the next day by the Hulk gang, the inbred redneck grandchildren of Bruce Banner, who had been born from the Hulk having sex with his own cousin She-Hulk in order to produce superpowered offspring. When they ask him if he's ready to take his punishment for a late payment, a vision flashes through Logan's mind of him ripping them apart with his claws, but in reality he meekly submits and allows them to smash his head open and beat him into the ground with no resistance, with them telling Logan he had better have double rent next month or his entire family dies. That night, Logan is visited by Hawkeye, who is now old and blind, left alive only because none of the supervillains considered him important enough to kill, who comes to Logan with a business proposition to help him with his money troubles. He says that he's delivering a package to the East Coast which needs to arrive in two weeks, and that if Logan comes with him and helps him navigate across the country, he would give him $500, which apparently is a lot of rent money for their impoverished existence. Logan accepts under the condition that he would not fight or engage in any violence, and when Hawkeye calls him Wolverine, he says, my name is Logan. With Hawkeye replying, sure it is. The next day, Logan says goodbye to his family and begins his journey with Hawkeye, who is driving the Spider-Mobile, Spider-Man's high-tech all-purpose vehicle from the 70s, which he had won off of a supervillain by cheating in a card game. Their first stop is in the ruins of San Francisco, where they find the entire city half sunken into the ground by the Moloids, a race of subterranean creatures discovered by the Mole Man, which act as the planet's immune system, being released upon the surface world when the population hit too high of a number to kill enough people to balance it out. Suddenly they're attacked by a gang of Ghost Riders, bikers riding the motorcycles of the three previous Ghost Riders, and when they attack Logan, he refuses to fight back, repeating his vow to never harm another living person while they beat and impale him. Hawkeye takes advantage of the distraction and fills them full of arrows, following the sound of their voices to aim and killing all of them. Hawkeye says that he didn't believe Logan about his pacifist ways until now, and asks what the villains did to him that they could make him this way. And seeing a memory of being covered in supervillains, Logan says that they broke him, and that's the only reason he's still alive. The next day they stop in Hammer Falls, Nevada, formerly known as Las Vegas, which currently falls under the Kingpin of Crimes jurisdiction. What's left of the town has become the biggest tourist attraction in North America, becoming a religious pilgrimage site of sorts for people who pray for the return of their superheroes like the days of the past, crowding around Mjolnir, the hammer of the fallen hero Thor, from which the town derives its new name. In town, they're approached by Ultron 8, the current husband of Hawkeye's third ex-wife, the youngest daughter of Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. 
Ultron brings them to her garage, and she tells Hawkeye that their daughter, Ashley, had seemingly taken up the mantle of Spider-Girl, and formed a superhero team, and had gone to take down the Kingpin of Crime. Logan initially says that he won't go with Hawkeye to save her, but when Hawkeye offers him double the money he had promised, Logan agrees, under the stipulation that he still won't fight anyone. In Salt Lake City, the seat of the current Kingpin, who had taken the territory by killing the previous ruler, Magneto, who had gotten too old to protect himself, Ashley's two friends, who had tried to take up the mantles of Daredevil and the Punisher, are chained up in a gigantic stadium and fed to Velociraptors, shipped in from the Savage Land in front of a cheering crowd. Hawkeye and Logan drive the Spider-Mobile across a building and smash into the facility where Spider-Girl is being kept, with Hawkeye leaping out and hacking through the Kingpin's men with a sword. Spider-Girl describes to Hawkeye where the control panel is on the wall, and measuring it against her voice, he nails it with an arrow and frees her as the Kingpin runs in. Spider-Girl grabs a shotgun from one of the dead guards and swings it so hard at Kingpin she decapitates him, saying that he made the mistake of getting old himself. She then smacks her father to the ground, with him shocked having thought she was taking after him as a superhero, having been proud thinking she was there to save everyone. She says that Hawkeye thought that because he was stupid, having gone there to murder the Kingpin like he had Magneto, and seize power for herself, preparing to kill Hawkeye to show her new men what she was made of. Logan floors the Spider-Mobile forward and grabs Hawkeye, driving directly through the side of the building and barreling into the desert, with Spider-Girl sending a giant group of her men in vehicles and on the backs of dinosaurs to chase them down. Suddenly a chasm opens up in the earth and Logan wakes up two hours later to find all of Ashley's men eaten alive by Moloids. Saving Hawkeye, who had been kept safe within the overturned Spider-Mobile, they use the car's ability to drive on any surface to drive straight up the chasm wall and escape. In South Dakota, Logan and Hawkeye talk about the unconfirmed fates of Reed and Sue Richards, while the Venom symbiote lurks and stalks them from the rocks. Driving past Mount Rushmore, we see that a giant section of the mountain has been carved out to reflect the newest president of the United States of America, the Red Skull. Stopping off at a diner in Des Moines, Iowa, Hawkeye and Logan have a heart-to-heart -heart where Hawkeye talks about messing up so bad with not raising Ashley, and Logan cries telling Hawkeye that he isn't the guy he used to be, that he couldn't get excited about death anymore, and just wants to live and love his wife and kids in peace. When someone in the bar starts to make a gay joke, Logan leaps on him and pins him to the ground, putting his fist under the man's chin and saying go ahead and make a joke. Logan storms outside and Hawkeye follows, asking Logan what the villains did to him, and Logan says to sit down and he'll tell him. Fifty years ago, the villains got their act together. Organized by the Red Skull, it became apparent that there were far more villains than heroes out there, and collectively they systematically attacked and butchered the heroes of Earth. At the X-Mansion, Wolverine and Jubilee had received distress calls from the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, Wakanda, and just about everywhere else, and before they can leave, the wall explodes inward, seemingly impaling Jubilee in the head and leaving Wolverine the only thing standing between an army of supervillains and the rest of the school. Wolverine fights Strife, Dr. Octopus, Blob, Green Goblin, Sinister, and just about every other villain imaginable, ruthlessly hacking through them to buy the young mutants time to escape. He yells out for Cyclops or Storm for anyone, all while beheading and skewering villain after villain, until he's literally covered by their blood and corpses. Bullseye is the last one standing, with Wolverine fighting with him for 90 minutes straight before finally finishing him off, with Bullseye then asking, why Logan, and saying that he was supposed to be their friend. Suddenly Wolverine sees that he's holding Jubilee in his arms, not Bullseye, and minor Spider-Man villain Mysterio, the master of illusion, reveals that he was the only villain who was ever there, introducing himself to Wolverine and thanking him on behalf of the villain community. Wolverine recoils in horror at the scene around him, seeing that he's covered in the decapitated and butchered bodies of all of the X-Men, having killed them all himself under Mysterio's illusion. Wolverine then wandered crying through the woods, laying his head down on the tracks of an oncoming freight train and symbolically killing Wolverine, not able to actually die due to his healing factor, but taking the pain as punishment. In present time, Logan cries and tells Hawkeye that Wolverine deserved to die, that he was a father now, and all his hands were used for was tending the land. The two continue their journey, and in Illinois, they're attacked by the Venom symbiote, which had followed them and bonded with a Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Savage Land to chase them down. Hawkeye fires a machine gun turret from the car, and Logan flips the car to avoid a man standing calmly in the road. The man turns out to be Black Bolt, who uses his massively powerful sonic ability to blast the Venom symbiote off of the dinosaur, with Logan, Hawkeye, and Black Bolt then being teleported into the Forbidden Quarter, a safe haven for the 20 or so mutants still alive run by Emma Frost, who uses her mental powers constantly to appear as if she hadn't aged a day. 
Emma has the Spider-Mobile fix for them and allows them safe passage through the rest of the region, having married the ruler, Dr. Doom, to ensure the safety of the remains of the mutant race. Traveling through Connecticut, they make their way through Pym Falls, which is named and marked by the gigantic skeleton of Hank Pym, aka Giant Man, which remains as yet another natural landmark left over from the day the heroes fell. Logan and Hawkeye finally arrive at their destination, New Babylon, formerly Washington, D.C., a rancid city full of druggies and prostitution, with a gigantic statue of the Red Skull holding the heroes of the past in his hand. Hawkeye reveals to Logan that he wasn't trafficking drugs, but actually bringing a case full of super soldier serum to an underground resistance group, seeking to form new superheroes to retake the world. Hawkeye tells his contact that his one condition, on top of the money he had promised to Logan, was a vial of super soldier serum for himself, and a place on the resistance team. Suddenly Logan is loaded with bullets from one of the resistance fighters, and Hawkeye's contact shoots him once in the chest revealing that there is no Rebel Alliance, no super team, and that Hawkeye had walked right into a shield sting operation. Hawkeye refuses to beg for his life, and his contact Tobias coldly shoots him in the head, ending his life. We see a flashback from the day the heroes fell, with Red Skull standing over the burning ruins of the capital, gloating to a broken Captain America about how he had organized the villains leading to their downfall, and how they were going to carve up the country between their chief lieutenants. When Red Skull says that he himself was getting the White House, Captain America cries as his most hated villain grabs his head and begins to crush his skull between his hands. In current time, the Red Skull stands in the White House room full of artifacts and pieces of the fallen superheroes, from Iron Man's armor, to Silver Surfer's broken surfboard, to the stuffed head of Beast, and all sorts of other trophies. Wearing Captain America's uniform, he talks about how even now he'd still beat him, telling his general that like ancient warriors who wore the skins of their dead foes, he likes to wear Cap's uniform, considering it his greatest trophy. The S.H.I.E.L.D. agents arrive, bringing Red Skull the bodies of Hawkeye and Logan, but not knowing who Wolverine was, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents notice that his wounds are healing, and Logan leaps out of the body bag and beats the men to death. Red Skull and Logan break out into an epic fight, with Skull locking his own men out of the room to fight one-on-one, -on -one, punching Logan back into the trophy case when he won't pop his claws. Skull swings the sword at Logan, who grabs Cap's shield from the ground and blocks it, sending Red Skull into a panic when he sees the shield being used against him. Logan proceeds to beat the hell out of the Red Skull with Captain America's shield, pinning him down and decapitating him with the weapon of the hero he had killed. Knowing that he had to make it back to his children, Logan outfits himself with the remains of Iron Man's armor, blasting the Red Skull's men and escaping the White House. Logan flies full speed back to California, running out of fuel most of the way there, and ending up making the whole trip in about two days. When he returns home, he's met by his neighbor, an old man who tells Logan that the Hulk gang had gotten bored, and shown back up already to murder his entire family. Looking over the bodies of his dead family, he tells the man that his name isn't Logan, bub, it's Wolverine, popping his claws for the first time in 50 years. Wolverine then goes on a bloody rampage through the Hulk clan, first chopping two of the ones who had murdered his family into bloody chunks, then finding the other three in a bar and impaling them while ripping them apart with his teeth, and then finding three more who had been fucking prostitutes into unconsciousness at a brothel. He makes his way to Banner's Lair, a giant cave surrounded by trailers and more Hulks, brutally massacring all of them and yelling into the cave for Banner to come out and face him. Bruce Banner emerges from the cave, with his normal body a shriveled old man, though he punches Wolverine with the Hulk strength still inside him, telling him that he had gotten bored being a supervillain landlord, and had his family killed to force Wolverine to pop his claws and fight him once again. He talks about how people claimed that the radiation sickness had driven him insane over the years, leading him to mate with his first cousin, She-Hulk, and Wolverine says that this ends now, impaling him with both claws for his dead family. Finally angry enough to become the Hulk, Banner erupts into a huge, disgusting old Hulk and grabs Wolverine, picking him up by each limb and chomping into him, devouring Wolverine alive. Twelve hours later, Hulk's remaining grandson, Billy Bob, who had been away when Wolverine went on his rampage, arrives at the cave, with Hulk telling him that he had made Wolverine his supper, and that it was up to him and Billy Bob to go fuck more prostitutes to create more Hulk babies, like the one infant grandson, Baby Bruce, who had just recently been born. Hulk suddenly doubles over in pain, and Wolverine, who had reconstituted himself inside of the Hulk's stomach due to his healing factor, erupts out of the Hulk's body and rips apart his spine, putting him down once and for all. One month later, Wolverine prepares to leave his small farm, having buried his wife and kids and returned their toys to their graves. He tells his neighbors that he's kept his head down long enough, and that he's going to go himself to form a new world of superheroes to take down each of the villains and restore the world to order, taking Bruce Banner Jr., the baby Hulk, to raise up as his first teammate. 
And that is the end of Old Man Logan, a ridiculous and inventive arc in the 2003 to 2009 Wolverine ongoing series that takes full advantage of being in a villain-ridden apocalyptic future to provide us with a ton of fun imagery and nods to the Marvel Universe. The story itself is pretty straightforward and mainly just relies on how cool and crazy the Old Man Logan world is. Personally, I just like seeing where everyone ended up and how the war between the heroes and villains had shaped an entire landscape and changed the country into something unrecognizable. It takes definite influence from multiple different westerns, but in my opinion works out really well and is a hell of a fun ride. I will be covering a lot more X-Men, X-23, and Wolverine titles in future episodes of Comic History, including an origin of X-23, which should be coming out very soon, and when Logan comes out in theaters, definitely expect a full movie review. Also, this past Friday was the first live episode of my new comic and superhero-themed podcast, the Comics Crossover Podcast, where myself and comic fan extraordinaire Jim from Comics Examiner team up to talk about all sorts of comic book and superhero topics. So if you enjoy my content, definitely make sure to go check that out as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment letting me know what you think about Old Man Logan, and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out the comic history playlist I've got up for all sorts of great stories like this, and recently I've made branched out playlists for specific histories on Spider-Man and the Symbiotes, X-Men, Batman, and Teen Titans, so check those out as well. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Roman underscore RNS, on Facebook, and also go check out our Patreon, where you can help me to make bigger and better history videos, and even commission any episode of comic history you'd like to see next. That's it for today's video, bub, and I'll see you all next time.